There's a moment in every gardener's life when you stumble upon something so old, so simple and so overlooked that it almost feels like discovering a secret you weren't meant to know. That's what this topic is. For nearly a full minute let's sit together as grow-minded people and acknowledge something unusual. The modern world convinced us that all sugar is bad, harmful, or empty, and for the most part, the modern processed versions deserve that reputation. But long before commercial refineries, before industrial whiteners, before sugar was transformed into something unrecognizable, there was a natural form used by our ancestors for strength, medicine, soil health, plant restoration, and even emergency treatment. It wasn't a treat. It wasn't junk. It was a superfood that carried minerals, enzymes, vitamins, and healing properties. Farmers used it. Gardeners used it. Traditional healers carried it in their packs, and in the hands of anyone who understood plants and soil, it became a tool for recovery, energy, nourishment, and microbial regeneration both in the body and in the garden. So, the real question is simple. Why did we erase it? Why was something so healing pushed aside until all we remembered was the sterile, processed white crystals that bear no resemblance to their original form? This guide is about reviving that forgotten knowledge and giving it back to those who can use it properly. Gardeners, growers, homesteaders, soil engineers at heart. In the minutes ahead, you'll learn exactly what this sugar is, what it does, and how it supports both plant health and human health in ways modern nutrition rarely discusses. This isn't a trend, it's not a new discovery, it's the restoration of something that kept communities alive long before refrigeration, supplements, and synthetic fertilizers existed. Let's dig in. The sugar we erased from mainstream awareness is unrefined cane sugar in its original forms, such as jaggery panela muscovado and traditional cane blocks produced without chemicals. These forms of sugar are dark, mineral-rich, and biologically active. They contain iron, magnesium, potassium, trace salts, antioxidants, and plant-based compounds that remain intact because they were never stripped, bleached, purified, or crystallized in industrial towers. For thousands of years, this was the only sugar civilizations knew. Farmers used it after long days in the fields. Gardeners added it to soil brews to activate microbes. Healers dissolved it in water for energy and recovery. And unlike refined white sugar, these traditional forms were not just calories. They were nourishment. When refining technology appeared, everything changed. The goal of industry was not nutrition but shelf stability, profit, and appearance. White sugar looked clean, predictable, controlled, but in that process, we lost the nutrients that made sugar valuable in the first place. What remained was the shell of a once powerful food. You know, gardeners often forget that soil life behaves very much like the life inside our bodies. Microbes need carbohydrates, minerals, and organic compounds to stay active, reproduce, and support plant roots. When you add a teaspoon of unrefined cane sugar or molasses-rich sugar to compost tea or microbial brews, you provide microbes with a rapid energy source that boosts their population and activity. This is something refined white sugar cannot do effectively because most of its biological complexity has been removed. Traditional cane sugar also carries minerals that support microbial health. When a soil drench contains both carbohydrates and micronutrients, plants respond with stronger root development, faster recovery from stress, and improved nutrient uptake. Old farmers used this method instinctively long before the science existed to explain it. In compost piles, a bit of unrefined sugar accelerates decomposition. It feeds the early bacteria that start the heating process and helps break down stubborn materials. In foliar sprays, it helps deliver nutrients through the leaf surface while supporting beneficial organisms on the leaf microbiome. 
This is the kind of low-cost, high-impact tool serious gardeners have used for generations, even though modern gardening stores rarely mention it. Ancient cultures didn't treat this sugar as candy. They treated it as nourishment. Because it wasn't stripped of minerals, unrefined sugar helped restore electrolytes after labor or illness. It supported digestion by encouraging healthy gut bacteria. Its iron content helped with fatigue. Its antioxidant compounds reduced inflammation. And because it came with its natural molasses content, it released energy slowly instead of spiking it. Many healers used it as the base for herbal remedies because it carried compounds that preserved the herbs and delivered them steadily into the bloodstream. This is why traditional cough syrups, tonics, stomach restoratives, and recovery drinks use jaggery or panela instead of white sugar. So when modern society replaced it with processed sugar, we didn't just shift to a sweeter version, we removed the part that made it useful. There is no mystery here. The disappearance of this superfood was economic. Refined sugar stores longer, ships more easily, looks more uniform, and fits neatly into industrial processing. The world didn't want better nutrition, it wanted consistency and profit. As refined sugar took over, the traditional forms were labeled primitive, unhygienic, or old-fashioned, even though they remained closer to the plant and far more beneficial. And because they cost more to produce in small batches, large companies had no interest in promoting them. The most unfortunate part is that generations grew up never knowing there was a difference. We judged all sugar by the worst version of it. Every gardener can benefit from adding traditional cane sugar to their toolkit. Whether you brew compost teas, ferment plant juices, enrich soil microbes, or support stressed plants during drought and transplant, this form of sugar offers a natural, inexpensive way to strengthen the soil's living systems. A small amount goes a long way. A teaspoon in a microbial brew, a pinch in a foliar spray, or a small addition to compost can transform the biological activity in your garden. And when used in the kitchen, it supports your own health in ways white sugar cannot. Bringing this knowledge back is not nostalgia, it's practicality, it's returning to what worked long before chemical fertilizers and synthetic additives existed. Ancient superfoods don't disappear because they stop working, they disappear because industry finds something more profitable to replace them with. Unrefined cane sugar is one of the best examples of this loss, but gardeners have always been the keepers of old knowledge. And by understanding the deeper role this sugar once played, in soil, in food, in medicine, we revive something valuable not just for our gardens but for our own well-being. If this guide gave you something worth applying in your garden, make sure you subscribe, share the video with fellow growers, and help keep this channel growing. More forgotten knowledge is on the way, and together we'll keep bringing it back.